Hello and welcome to Latina Role Model. I'm your co-host, Leticia Miller, and today we have these two beautiful ladies joining us from Osceola County Sheriff's Office. How are you guys doing today? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, we have Stephanie and Lisette today. Tell us a bit about yourself. Well, uh, my name is Lisette Burgos. Um, let's see, I was born in Puerto Rico. Uh, I lived there till I was 12. Then after that, I moved to the Bronx, New York. And that was a little bit of a culture shock for me. I learned how to speak English. Um, you know, I graduated high school from there. And then in 2010, I moved down here to Florida. And that's when I started to embark on what was I going to do with my life career-wise. So um, in 2012, um, I joined the police academy after meeting some really influential people in my uh, job previously to law enforcement. Um, what I did was I was a senior beauty advisor at Walgreens. Um, I sold makeup and um, I had a couple people, you know, that worked at the sheriff's office that would come in um, to the store and I would always be super like inquisitive about, hey, you know, how's work, like what's going on? Uh, there was one detective that um, I used to talk to a lot and actually our major now, Major Ruiz, at the time, uh, he was a sergeant, I believe, and his children went to the school right next to the job where, uh, where I worked. And so we, you know, we chit-chatted about the work, and then I decided, hey, I want to change my life. I want to change the course of my career. And um, I was always interested in law enforcement. I always liked you know, the Carmen Sandiego uh, cartoons and the investigative, like gargoyles. I, I always loved the detective, the one that wore the red jacket. So. Um, but, you know, I never really knew that law enforcement was for me until it came to deciding what I wanted to do in a career. And I thought, well, I don't like the nine to five job, so I wanted to do something that I felt um, I was helping people and something meaningful. And I wanted to challenge myself because I was a little bored with that. So um, I went ahead and joined the police academy. And seven years later, here I am. I uh, worked five years on patrol. Um, I was a field training officer for three. Um, I was training new deputies, um, you know, showing them the road work and stuff like that. Um, after that, I went to the school resource unit. I worked in schools for about two or three months. And then I was transferred over to the unit that I'm now, which is community services, community involvement, and crime prevention. So I'm assigned to the Poinciana area. I've been doing that for a little, two, for a little over two years and um, just touching bases with people, creating relationships with the community and kind of showing them a different side of law enforcement, showing them, hey, we're here to serve you, we're here to be your friends. Um, I'm the person that they feel comfortable going to with their issues, um, especially in the Point Siena area, which I'm assigned to. And I'm basically their contact person, their liaison, who they, you know, they know my number, they know my email address. When they have an issue or a concern, they feel more comfortable coming to me, telling me, um, you know, I give those concerns to the appropriate units and we handle it that way, so. And I love what I do now, so. It's seven I'll years. a little bit about <laughs> me, that's right. How about you, Stephanie? Well, thank you for having me. Oh. Um, thank you for having us. So, m I'm Stephanie King. I, my maiden name is Stephanie Garcia, so my father is Puerto Rican. Um, he's from Arecibo, Puerto Rico, and my mother immigrated here from Colombia, from Pereira, Colombia. Um, my sisters are both Colombian and I'm the only one that was born in New York City. Um, so I started uh, working for JetBlue Airways in New York and in 2010 I decided that it was time for a change. I, I would became a mom um, and I thought it was time for a change, change of atmosphere for me and, and my son um, and I moved to Florida. I be started in the police academy. I met uh, Deputy Burgos over here when we were first starting in the police academy this was in approximately 2011 and then the beginning mm -hmm. of 2012. Uh, during the process, I, was, I became a single mom and I was working for JetBlue uh, Airways during my separation from um, my significant other at the time. So it was very hard for me to put myself through the academy. Back at that time, you can put yourself through it where you'll be paying for it yourself. Times have changed now. Um, but I put myself through the academy working part time and being a single mom and not finding a babysitter, so it was very tough for me during that time, 2012 to 2013 was probably the hardest time for me. Um, I graduated with uh, the police academy and became 
uh, deputy sheriff. I did two years on the road in patrol. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I got transferred over to CID, to, which is the Criminal Investigations Division. It was always my dream since I was a little girl to be a police officer. And also I read a lot of books of Nancy Drew, Sherlock Holmes. So my dream was always to become a detective. You know, that's, that was my passion. Um, and I was able to do that. I became part of the part Persons Crimes Unit. We did a lot of domestic violence. I worked elder abuse investigations, shootings, um, aggravated assaults, batteries, missing persons. I got good experience there, and then I got transferred to the Sex Crimes and Child Abuse Investigations Unit. I worked a lot of um, big cases there, and I saw a lot of things um, dealing with uh, sex crimes and a lot of child victims, which really opened my eyes to a lot. Um, I became very passionate about helping um, the vulnerable, people that can't help themselves, um, which is children and elderly. And um, while I was doing that, I was also going to UCF, Go Knights. Um, <laughs> I got my master's in public administration um, while being a detective. And I decided I wanted to, you know, I was passionate about sex crimes. It hurt me a little bit to, to leave that because I was very passionate about it. But I wanted to also, um, become a role model for other people and uh, share that passion with the, the deputies on the street. Um, and I put in for the sergeant's uh, promotional exam. I passed it and um, got promoted last year in 2019. And uh, now I am the first Hispanic uh, Latina sergeant um, awesome. in the history of the Osceola County Sheriff's Office, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so, and that's where I'm at right now. I am a sergeant on the road. You guys have so much in common. Yeah, we do, yes. surprisingly, yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> we awesome. Met, yeah, we both, you know, are from New York. Well, yeah. I can say, you know, my the second part mm -hmm. of my life, um, and she's from Queens, New York, right? Yes. Uh, we met before the academy, and we've stayed friends. I mean, we've gone on different routes, obviously, mm -hmm. but we've always, you know, kind of but go with back the same, to each Different other. routes, but with the same purpose, for right. sure. Right, exactly. So what motivated you to become a police officer? Well, for me, um, it was more like a change of life, you know, because I realized that what I was doing, I was I worked for Walgreens for a little over five years. I was like, oh, this, there's got to be something else to, to life, you know. Um, I can't sell makeup for the rest of my life, right? So, you know, speaking to my mother, my mother is a big influence in my life. Um, she has always wanted to be a, a police officer, by the way. So she tried on my uniform and everything. <laughs> so, um, you know, my my goal or my inspiration rather is to change my life do something mm -hmm. to challenge myself uh something that i could say wow i'm proud of that so and for me law enforcement was it you know i joined the police academy and i told myself if something happens to where this doesn't go through then i'm going to take it as a sign and i'm going to do something else and but as soon as i applied things just went smoothly from there i had no issues whatsoever so i said okay, this has to be the path that I'm destined to be in. So that was kind of my motivation. That's an amazing story. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, it's good. Yeah, you went from Walgreens to yeah. being a police officer. That's, that's, the, that's, that's a big achievement. Yeah, um, uh, I still go to Walgreens and they're like, oh my God, how are you? You know, how are you doing? So, I mean, for the people watching, I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to always want to be a cop you know you set a goal for yourself and if that's what you want to go for then then you can do it you know you just have to be disciplined and this job is for whoever wants it you know I mean it's hard to get in the police department so it's it's not easy that's <laughs> true uh, for me the the toughest part was the physical aspect of it and I'm sure most females can agree um, you know you don't just work out and and fight for survival every day so you know, that was a little bit to kind of get used to. But once you get in there and you, you start becoming passionate about it, then that was it for me. This is a personal question I wanted to ask. <laughs> what is everything you have on your belt? Well, we have a couple things. Um, we A little bit of everything. Yeah, most of us <laughs> carry the same thing. So, well, all of us do. Um, so we have our OC spray or our pepper spray. This, you know, we use when we have somebody resisting, but it's not uh, an aggressive resistance. Okay. It's more, you know, they're not hurting us. It's more like a 
you know, refusing to do something, so we would use that then. Um, we have our handcuffs. Obviously, we know what that's for. <laughs> uh, we have our, our gun, which is a 9 millimeter Glock. On the other side, we have extra ammo. We have two um, magazines. And then we have our taser. And then back here, we have the radio. Um, I don't carry a baton, but we also carry a baton on our belt. Um, um, usually, that's no, well, we also car carry, which I don't have in my belt right now, but we also carry a tourniquet oh, um, right. for, to use in case of an emergency. If somebody um, was shot, it would be ourselves, or if we're giving aid to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Victim of a shooting. Right, that I have that in my car. Yeah. We can put is it, it heavy? Absolutely. Yeah, our belt is about, what, 17 pounds? And really, every, wow, and everybody puts it. different stuff, you know? Like, that's what we have right now when we're in our, you know, dressed up uniform, mm -hmm. but when we're in other uniforms, you could put a first aid kit on, right. on our belt and different things. Some people put gloves on their belt. So it's it's the basics and also each officer is going to you know know what he wants on his belt something that you can get too easily and fast so what's the hardest part about being a police officer i think you should answer that. yes that's <laughs> definitely an answer perception i think um perception of what um the public sometimes could think of us i think there's a lot of people that support law enforcement but i also think that sometimes you know we've came a long way um, from in modern policing than when we were a long time ago. Um, but I think that perception also changes on past experiences that people have. Everybody has a different experience with law enforcement, whatever they saw on social media or whatever they personally experienced themselves or whatever a cousin or a family member has told them or whatever they see on TV. I think, you know, we want to, my, my biggest thing for getting into law enforcement was to make a difference in the community. And I think, you know, it's hard sometimes when we know that there's, you know, a negative perception at times, you know, not everybody again, but some people could think um, based on other of what is posted or what is said. And I think that's the hardest thing for us because we want to help so much and we want to make a difference and we want their trust. So we want them to see that we're human as well, that, you know, we have kids, we're married, we have a life, we have a personal life and we're just like you. We're human, and we want them to see that. So, getting that across to our citizens um, is something that sometimes could be difficult. But when I think of that, is I just we want to build a strong, healthy relationship with between law enforcement and the community. We want to bridge any gaps. So, when we see anything that's not portrayed that way, it's hard, but it fuels us. It makes us work harder and making a difference. You know, m making an impact in our community. So, it's there's a negative, but we turn it into a positive. So. We're running out of time right now, but I want to appreciate you guys for coming in. This is Leticia Miller with Latina Role Models.